there are many things to talk about, but one thing is I feel like we have this kinship and I, I, of both coming up at around the same time in, oh, very, yeah. di- in very different ways. Very much so. But early 90s, and it's so hilarious to me now that at the time that was very much, it was the present, it was the early 90s. Now, Sona, to you, it probably sounds Ancient, yeah. Ancient. 90s. The 90s. Yes. Oh, they you had don't, TV back they then? Had, they Sona, they had just developed the television. Oh, you, wow. don't have to, you don't have to say it like, like, that. like that. That actually hurt my feelings. The 90s? That was like yeah. one of those where she's like, tuberculosis. Yeah. <laughs> Dear God. But, Pleurisy? I didn't know that. Is that still a disease? Now, clear, Rickets? Clear something up for me. Were you on a test show of mine or not? I, I was not. You were not on a test show because no. the test shows were... As 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 uh, dysfunctional and insane as the early shows that were on air uh, were, I can't remember who was on the test shows and who were not on the test shows. I remember right. Mickey Rooney being on a test show. Oh dear God! And did um, he know it was a test show, <laughs> or did he think? I have a very clear memory of talking to Mickey Rooney out, outside that Thirty Rock hallway, right. and I'm nobody, and he is hanging from a garment rack. His feet dangling, he's yeah. hanging on a garment rack yeah. like a chimpanzee, yep, yep. and he's in his white t-shirt, and he said, Conan, I used to have a full head of hair, but Harry Warner made me use this shampoo, and I lost it all. <laughs> and I thought, this is an amazing wow. job I have. This is an incredible job. He blamed his hair loss on Harry Warner <laughs> in 1941, making him use a kind of More shampoo. More impressive is a 90-year-old man with that agility oh, yeah. to be hanging off of He a, was flipping around. That's incredible. Doing t- full 360s. Now, um, for for uh, uh, consistency's sake, we should have Sona go, Mickey Rooney? Mickey Rooney? <laughs> what? When we get to a name you know, yeah. just say bingo. Okay. Yeah. But until then, just deal with this. Okay. As we walk through our careers, it's yeah. going to be, you're going to see, there's going to come a moment where you're like, I remember that show. Okay. But it's going to be a while. So, okay. So All right. I'll wait. Yeah. I just want to know if you have the same feeling that I have about this, which yeah. is that there was this period of time where... And this might just be me, but I felt like a lobster without its shell, uh, so young, so like, Jesus Christ, this is, you know, 1993 doing this show, uh, so raw. It felt like it took forever to get to the point where people said, yes, now you've arrived. That felt to me like it took a thousand years. To you. To me, but but hold on. Wow. But, but John, let me tell you something. Let yeah, me finish yeah. this. So then there's this period where finally it felt like it gelled. So it's a thousand years of feeling like I've got to get there. I've got to get there. I've got to get there. I've got to get to the point where I'm accepted. Then it starts to gel. And then before I know it, it's, you're the old guy. (laughs) And and, no, no, not in a bad way. It's it's nice. Like you're the, you're the elder statesman. The time moved in a manner that was (laughs) shockingly. You know, Conan, it was only yesterday yeah. that... You're that you realize you're the narrator from... Uh... Once the fungus on the nail on your big toe begins to creep... You know what I'm talking about, which it's is... It's so interesting to me that you thought that because you were... And this is not a, a exercise in smoke, but you were kind of legend to us already at that time because of Lampoon, because of uh, SNL, The Simpsons. Like, you were already in our eyes, a made man. Oh, so it's it, so interesting to me that yeah. that you would feel. But nobody feels that. You don't, or I don't know. I think there are people that think, uh, I've always heard that Eddie Murphy, right, when he was doing stand-up and was like 17. But that's Mozart. That's, yeah, no, yeah, I know. That's I know. a prodigy. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> please, I don't, I didn't even see really? the, I didn't even see the, no, no, he's, he's uh, beyond, he's, he might be the most talented human being yeah, it's, that's ever wandered onto the planet. It's different. So, so, but what I'm saying is, I know a, a guy, a comedian named Ron Richards that I worked with in another lifetime in like 1985 told me that he did stand up. Uh, and he did stand up when Eddie Murphy was just starting and Eddie Murphy was like, I don't know, 16 right. years old or something, 17. And that there'd be nobody, there were nights where there was nobody in the club or maybe one person. So a lot of people wouldn't even bother going on or right. they'd go out and just sort of phone it in. He, he said, Eddie would go out and do to one person, would do it as if the whole room was packed. This is when no one knew him. This is pre-SNL. Right. He would do it, the whole thing. And then he'd walk off stage and he'd tell people, 
I'm going to be one of the biggest stars in the world. Wow. And um, he just knew. He just knew because, and, I, and that makes sense. Then uh, I'm contrasting that <laughs> with my own experience of- uh, How much of that is internal though? Because, you know, uh, as, as an outside observer, right? You know, and I've heard you speak about this and, and sort of this idea of you felt a little bit like not the cool kid or not the dirt, but for those of us who are sort of not in that stream, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, Harvard Lampoon or SNL or Simpsons. Well, Harvard Lampoon was, does not see, this is the other thing. Yeah. I don't think that confers coolness. That was the one thing oh, I wish. That time? No, 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 no. That was the one thing I wished I could have changed about my bio. Really? Is that. What's so cool that Dave, he comes out of the mist, he's from Ball State, that's just much better. I remember before I even went on the air, people were like, Harvard, oh, so some intellectual is going to take over for David Lett? And I thought, well, no, I'm actually quite silly and- I'm actually, gonna make Dick Cavett look like yo, low humor. Yeah, exactly. No. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Masterpiece Theater. Tonight, I have Peter to tell Ustinov. You, I have to tell you, we had a guy that did our warm up before we knew we needed to get someone to do our warm up, And right. he, he, uh, was, he was the announcer on the show, Joel Goddard, lovely man. But we just said, well, we don't know who does the announcing. Who does it like on the Tonight Show? And they said, well, the announcer always does it. Ed McMahon always did it for Johnny. Okay, so we asked Joel Goddard to do it. And I- would go out and I could always tell the audience was like, oh, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> and I would think, well, that's that's all on me. And one night, a couple of weeks into the show, late night, 93, I'm like putting on my tie and I wander out and I hear Joel talking to the crowd and he went, and of course he went to Harvard where he wrote a thesis, <laughs> literary progeria on the works of Flannery O'Connor and William Faulkner. <laughs> this man had, was born with a silver spoon in his ass. And you're going to laugh. And I thought, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Can I tell you? Yeah. The angry announcer character, maybe <laughs> that is an archetype. Yeah. I, yeah. I would hope that uh, Johnny Gilbert does that on Jeopardy. <laughs> this motherfucker. This motherfucker. Don't think that he doesn't know the questions. He does. <laughs> They're on a paper. He'll act like it's coming to him, but it's not. It's all written out. So, but in, but this is, you're talking about the broader world like in our so for comics right and and you probably same as me came of age in sort of the 70s late 70s mm -hmm. or early 80s national lampoon right. was it yes and those guys came out of doug kenny henry beard right you know yeah and they were legends in comedy and you knew that they had created right a kind of new anarchy right and a new form and they were so idolized and knowing that you would come out of that same stream, you know, hmm. that, so where the larger world might look at it and say like, oh, it's Harvard, it's gonna be right, right. academically removed or intellectualized. <laughs> She's gonna be giving or, lectures. Right, you, you, won't, you won't do a pratfall, you'll just go, and I waited three seconds and then allowed gravity to do its thing. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the way, so coming out of that, yeah was like legend. Well, here's the thing. I guess the larger point I'm trying to-, to I need a Sona. Yeah, you do. You need a Sona. You can That's have- what I need. Guess no. what? I gift- No. There's nothing Valuable. politically- Hey, there's nothing politically incorrect about saying I gift you this woman. <laughs> I think I'm on pretty solid ground. No question. Sona, I gift you. Um, <laughs> oh, no, this is so oh fucked my up. God. Well, don't worry, this will never air. Um, I guess Conan, what I was. I want you to know that if there's anything that you say on this podcast that you don't feel good about, <laughs> that it'll come out. You can. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I will allow. That is my rule for my guests. <laughs> but Gorley, if I fuck up, leaves it in intentionally. Yeah, he does. Oh, that's so he funny. leaves in all of the. So uh, that's I don't get that courtesy. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that we. I think we came up at the same time. Yes. We're, we're the same age. We've had these wonderful experiences. But what I'm noticing just in general, and I'm wondering if it feels the same way to you, is mm -hmm. that there was this period of adrenaline. Uh, I often feel like when you watch The Bear, that's what it felt like to me to put a late night show together. Right. Early on, it felt like you have to live there. You're constantly living on the edge. You feel like you have to, re you have to reinvent the menu every night. It's right. like, and then there's this brief the period of, oh my God, people are coming to the restaurant, we got our stars, everything's good. Even though I uh, doesn't feel this way to other people, that felt quick. And then, 
Ah, the eldest statesman. Right. <laughs> you better take a nap. That felt like that part yeah. lasts a lot longer. Yeah. And uh, and the the new guys and the new gals come up real fast. And I don't know. That's how it just felt to me. And I'm not complaining. I just find right, it like right. it's, like a trick in time. Well, there's definitely. I feel that time jump related more towards. I think the physical manifestation of erosion that I see in the morning, right. like it's not, I don't feel that way about necessarily uh, the career, but I also think we followed a slightly different path in that as a standup, like I did face a tremendous amount of, uh, I guess what uh, my agent called failure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And lack, I'm, unf I'm unfamiliar, lack, with, lack I'm unfamiliar with this word. I'm but, familiar. but having been canceled or having yeah. been, yeah. you know, done all those, those different things. So I think I had a different expectation right. of what making it was. And I, I think ultimately, and I'm sure it was a rationalization or some kind of mechanism that the success for me coming from where I came from mm -hmm. was impulsively moving to New York with no money mm -hmm. or prospects or anybody in my life mentioning that I might have ability right. and having a six week sublet and saying, fuck it. I, I, Trenton, New Jersey ain't it. And I'm not working at the bottom half and for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. I'm getting that, you know, Right. I'm, I'm putting Springsteen in there and going, it is a death trap. It, it is, is a suicide, suicide rap. rap. <laughs> and you got to get out while you're not young, but, yeah, you know, uh, 24, 25. I don't remember those lyrics at all. But Do you know who uh, Bruce Springsteen is? Bingo. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Not Rick Springfield. Oh. Similar. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not um, Harry Styles. Different. <laughs> no. Then Imagine Harry no Styles idea. with a bandana. Well, <laughs> And different bandana placement. <laughs> yeah. Harry Styles would wear it like a gondolier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry Styles would have it on here. Oh, solo <laughs> mio. Taking you a- uh, That's right. Springsteen ba Canals. back pocket to, to wipe the working man's sweat off the working man brow. Whereas Harry Styles would wear it as like, where well, it's covering my pearls. I don't know what's happening. That's all it is. You have to that cover the, the pearls. You yes. have to cover the pearls, but it's the same idea. That's right. Harry Styles and Bruce Springsteen, it's basically the same the thing. Same. Okay. That's right, that's right. If you know one, you know the other. Exactly. So I was took my daughter to, um, uh, it wasn't Outside Lands, it Coachella? was Coachella. And Harry Styles performed and I saw him and at one point he turned around and he had an H on one ass pocket and an S on the other. And I thought, why didn't I think that? Can I, I tell you something? Yeah. I saw that and the whole time I was thinking, who's SH? I was reading it <laughs> in, in Hebrew. That's the problem. And so I listen, got, and I said, as Sally Hemmings, what, what are we looking at I am, here? You know what the problem why is? Why is he doing and that? And also you had your Torah stick out. <laughs> What is the name for that goddamn stick? I've been. Uh, I think Taurus stick. Oh, Taurus stick. Goddamn Taurus stick. Goddamn Taurus stick. Probably doesn't Where's sound. Where's my goddamn Taurus stick? But what, whenever I've gone to concerts with John, whenever there's any kind of reading, you know, if they yeah, put up anything on, sure. he always takes Where's out my his goddamn Taurus. He takes his Taurus right. stick out and he goes. This he goes right list to left. Doesn't make any sense. These aren't even words. <laughs> Why would he start? Yes. Why would he start with Born to Run? All no, no, true. no, no, John, that's the last song.